Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live and today is Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019 and we again find ourselves in the final trading hour of the day. Um, as I mentioned each day, I believe that the prices as close as you can get them to, to the close of the day are the most valid prices and that is because during the daytime you have the algorithms, you have the day traders battling it out. In my opinion, I consider it <clears throat> a lot of noise. At the end of the day, the market makers, a large institution, uh, financial institutions come in, take over and move the prices to what I believe are the most valid prices. They're the most well-equipped, they have the best information, they have the most money, and they make the majority of their buying and selling decisions at the end of the day. So that is where I wanna hitch my wagon to. I wanna hitch my wagon to those guys and base my buying and selling decisions on those prices instead of the prices during the day. So anyway, um, let's see. Uh, currently the Dow is up 20 points. The NASDAQ is down 42 points down about a half a percent and the S&P is down five points down 0.18 percent so uh, kind of a mixed bag today uh, we did have some earnings this morning we do have some earnings after the bell um, of course I've mentioned this many times but uh, it is one hard and fast rule that I have that I never ever ever gamble in front of earnings, meaning I don't hold a stock position when the earnings are going to be in the afternoon or the next morning. It really is the quickest and fastest way to lose a lot of money in seconds. And, you know, as far as trading goes, our biggest goal, our biggest uh, uh, concern that we should always be fixated on is the number one is reducing our risk. Right. Of course, we want to make money, but actually making the money should be our second priority. The first priority should be conserving, conserving and preserving what we have in the best way. Like the literally the best way you can do that is not to hold stocks through earnings. So uh, anyway, I want to appreciate or I want to thank everybody for coming to this channel. I appreciate you spending your time here, investing your time each day. I hope it is helping. Um, and you're, you know, learning some good trading and investing principles. Um, I just want to make sure that we are coming through loud and clear. So if you can hear me, uh, I'd appreciate if you just say hi in the chat, just, just so I know we're coming through. Okay. Before we get started, we do have some earnings after the bell today. Hey, there we go. Hey Jackson, how you doing, my friend? Good morning to you too. So I guess it's morning in early early morning, I think, in Australia. So appreciate you coming, Jackson, and really looking forward to working with you in the futures. Uh, you just let me know when you're ready, and we will get it all scheduled up, and we will begin. Hey Jesse, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. That's our friend Jesse from uh, Minnesota. And Stephen Burns, hey buddy, how you doing? Good to see you, Steve. Always an honor and a, and a pleasure to have you here, Steve. And uh, um, I'm always excited when Steve Burns is in the chat, and I know everyone else is. So thank you so much, sir, for coming by, and thank you for everything you do. Hey, John, John Cortez, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for coming by. So, all right, well, it looks like we are uh, coming through loud and clear. So. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to look at today, kind of an interesting day, a uh, little bit, seems like a little bit of a reversal day today. Um, you know, I mentioned this yesterday, but uh, Steve Burns posted this from at eWhispers, but I have really come to rely on on these posts that they do uh, on Twitter. And so you should follow eWhispers and, and take a look at this because they make this nice graphic that shows you know who the the big companies that are reporting and whether they're reporting in the morning or the night just so you know that you know a lot of times you'll see oh mcdonald's is reporting on tuesday and a lot of times people will think okay well that's after the bell but then it's actually in the morning and you can get clobbered like you would have if you would have kept mcdonald's so after the close we have snap chipotle sketchers irobot i think that says texas instruments whirlpool discover Six Flags. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. We have Boeing in the morning, Waste Management, Caterpillar, and then after the close, we have Microsoft, Tesla, PayPal, eBay, 
next day 3m nokia amazon visa intel so this is a big big week as far as earnings are concerned so let's keep that in mind all right so the plan for today as usual first of all we're going to go ahead and run the u.s legal disclaimer we're going to get that out of the way we're going to come back we're going to take a look at all my current positions we're going to talk about when i bought them why i bought them and how i'm going to manage them going forward um after that we are going to do a few minutes on trader psychology it's very important it's the most important skill that you can learn in trading is managing your emotions and especially when you're in a downtrend or an extended downtrend or you get punched in the face figuratively from the market and that is where you really have to be on your game and you really have to manage those emotions and essentially do things that you don't want to do and don't do things that you do want to do i think that's one of the best things i have ever heard uh so and then after that we're going to go through each one of my stocks one by one we're going to take a look at all the support and resistance levels we're going to take a look at all the indicators the way i look at trading i view indicators and when i mean indicators i'm talking rsi macd's moving averages moving average crossovers um, I look at those as potential groups of buyers so if I get a trigger if one indicator tells me okay uh, you know this possibly could be an entry I, I just I look at that as groups of buyers coming in and if you want to put yourself in the best possible position to make money on a trade you want to put yourself in a position when you have the most buyers possible so if you can get a confluence or a combination of several indicators at the same time the way that I view that I view that as multiple groups of buyers coming in and again the more buyers the better on the other hand if you're buying something where there's absolutely no signals well you're probably not gonna have a lot of buyers there also right and again if you don't have a lot of buyers your 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 stocks probably not going to go up so that is really how i look at trading i look for convergences i look for combinations of indicators showing that there's you know m several groups of buyers coming in at the same time um we're going to go down through we're going to look see if we can find some combinations of those indicators like i just mentioned uh, we'll go down through we'll kind of do a quick draft through we'll mark some possibilities and then at the end of the day we'll go through those candidates with the fine tooth comb and decide whether or not we want to buy them and we might find something that looks really great but we have to also consider do we already have any positions that are in that same industry we don't, we don't want to have too much correlation so you know these are the things you have to go through you look at the risk to reward all that kind of stuff right you might get something with a really good you know group of indicators but it might be too high in the atr channel um it also may not provide a good risk to reward at that level so these are all the things we have to decipher and and calibrate to see whether or not you know it makes sense for us and then after that after the market closes if anybody has any questions whatsoever please let me know i'm happy to clarify anything that you didn't quite understand if you'd like me to take a look at a particular stock symbol i'm happy to do that um, and give you my opinion and then you know if you if you see some type of stock symbol during the live stream before the market closes if you feel like you know it would be of interest to the group or helpful helpful to the group you know please go ahead type it in the the chat and you know if you don't mind maybe put a star or an asterisk or a couple of them a couple asterisks by it so i know it's more time sensitive otherwise uh, i'll look at the at the ones that are not time sensitive after the market closes so that is the plan for today so uh all right i'm going to run the u.s legal disclaimer so hold tight and i will be back in about 40 seconds This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right. All right. 
uh, Jackson says, how situation all done? Thumbs up so we can go whenever you're ready, mate. Hey, that's great, Jackson. You just you just let me know when you're ready to go. You you just let me know. I am ready for you. So you can email me after, or, you know, Skype me or whatever, and uh, we will set it up. We will set it up. I'm, oh, I'm glad to hear that, and I'm, I'm ready to go with the lessons. Hey, Anthony. Hey, buddy. How you doing? There's our friend Anthony from New York. Hello, all. The gang's all here. Yes, looks like we are. Good to see you, Anthony. Hope you're doing well. Hope everything's going well with your trading. You know, let me know what's happening. I, I'm very, in, I'm always very interested to uh, know, you know, how my uh, clients' trading is going, what kind of positions they're they're getting, and how they're doing. And of course, you know, if I can be a help, I am available. So, all right. Well, let's take a look real quick. Let's see here. So I only have three positions today, um, IWM. So I did buy IWM, which is the Russell 2000. I bought it back here on the 15th of October. We had this close above the 200 day moving average, close barely above the 200 day, which is what I like because if I'm wrong, on the other side of that 200 day on a closing basis, I just go ahead and give out, giving me a small risk to the downside if I am uh, incorrect on the trade. In addition to that, we had a MACD crossover on the same day that this happened. I don't think I would have taken this trade just with the break above the 200 because it doesn't back test all that well. But in conjunction with the uh, MACD crossing over, that is why I took it. And I was fortunate enough that it has moved up nicely. Um, we bought it here at uh, 151.39. We're at 154.29 got kind of close to one of the profit targets today, did not quite get there. Um, but uh, going forward here, uh, we are more than one ATR away from my entry. This is a discretionary trade. So it is more than more than one ATR away from my entry, meaning that if today we close below yesterday's low, I better just put a little mark there earlier in the day that didn't look like it was gonna happen. Now it does look like it might happen. <laughs> so, Let's see, yesterday's low was 153.90. Oh, I got it right there. So if we close below 153.90 today, I'm gonna go ahead and just get out because we moved more than one ATR away from my entry. At that point, um, I institute a trailing stop and my trailing stop would be a close below the previous day's low. If it holds, I will hold it. If it keeps moving up, I will continue to phase out until we have a close back below the previous day's low. Um, if we got up here to the orange line, this is the previous high. If we rejected the previous high, this would also be a red flag for me. If it does keep going, rejects the 70, I will go ahead and get out and lock in profits there. If it just keeps moving up, then by the time it gets up to the six ATR channel or this or, uh, kind of purple line, I will be out of my shares. So that's what I'm going to do to the upside or to the downside. And if it just crashes back uh, below tomorrow, below today's low, uh, I would also go ahead and lock it in there. But I do phase out. So I was able yesterday to hit some at the very top here and here. So I've been able to phase out. All my phase out have been in the money. So uh, the market can't take that back away from me. And if the market does move down, then it mitigates the loss that I have. So that's the plan on Russell. Glad to see that it is up today, barely, but it was up much higher earlier. All right, here are the cues. I did buy the cues back here on the 11th of October. I bought this with a completely mechanical trade, the 520 EMA crossover. Uh, this is mechanical trade, so it's pretty easy. Um, it's either going to continue up, I'm going to phase out until I'm out of shares, or my stop will be a five crossing back below the 20. Um, did not hit a profit target today. Uh, you know, this is a bit concerning for me, and I'll tell you, it's one of the challenges I have with my trading is when I take these mechanical crossover trades because, you know, I see a lot of issues here. Uh, we tested, we got up and tested this high. We haven't been able to break above it. We rejected the second ATR channel. We have a V1 to the downside. All stuff that I don't like. <laughs> All stuff that I don't like, but I do like to vary up my trading. I like to have some mechanical positions. I like to have some discretionary. I think it, it smooths your equity out in the long run. I mean, you know, if this were discretionary trade, I might go ahead and just get out today, I probably would actually, but then it might go roaring up and I would miss it, 
right? So that's why I like to have some discretionary, some mechanical. Um, so this is mechanical. So I'm going to hold my hold my nose and just hold this trade and let the let the trade uh, work itself out in conjunction with my original plan, which is completely mechanical five staying over the 20. So, you know, if we go down for the next three days, I'll be like, dang it, I should have got out, but really I shouldn't have because that was my plan. So as long as the five stays above the 20, I will stay in. I will continue to phase out till I'm literally just out of shares or the five crosses back below the 20. All right, the world famous spy trade. So in case we have some new viewers today, I did want to just go over this quickly, but this is a back test. It has nothing to do with uh, technicals or fundamentals or anything else. This is just a good long-term back test from Lizanne Saunders at Bespoke Invest on Twitter. And with this back test, you have two options. Option number one is you can buy the SPY, the SPY ETF tracking every day at the open and sell it every day at the close. So from 1993, if you'd have done this every day, buy at the open, sell at the close, buy at the open, sell at the close. If you would have done this every day from 1993, for all your troubles, you would have returned a negative 13.9%. But if you do the opposite, which is what I do, and buy the SPY at the close, sell it first thing in the morning. So buy at the close, sell in the morning, buy at the close, sell in the morning, every day since 1993, you've actually returned 634.2%. So past performance is no guarantee of future results. That is correct. And that goes for any trading methodology. Uh, but uh, you know what I find interesting about this is, you know, this buying at the close, selling at the open, that means that all the gains in the S&P 500 have come from people bidding it up in the after hours, bidding it up in the pre-market and selling into the open of the day. So that is why I do it. Uh, I've been using it since February 26. It's been very profitable. It's been one of my best trading approaches and it's so simple, right? But I do like this chart because it shows if you do have an edge in the long run, it plays out. But in between you have ups and downs and ups and downs doesn't mean the approach is not valid. It's just a normal random uh, distribution with a long-term drift to the upside. So, you know, what this chart shows you is if you have something that has a good back tested edge, use it, but position size correctly and conservatively so you can stay in it for the long run and you don't get too down or disgruntled if you have a down period, which clearly happens doesn't mean anything's wrong with the approach it just means it's just normal so always position size correctly so with that being said uh, we did have another nice overnight spy trade uh, on the spy i did buy it yesterday at 299.99 the very end of the day and i sold it today at the open at 363 cents so we made 64 cents per share on this not bad and it has reversed since then. I actually hit a all time high on using this approach yesterday. Uh, I didn't know what the numbers were till after the market closed and I did my accounting. Uh, but of course today was another profitable one. So just logically uh, it did hit another profit or did hit another all time high using this approach today. So um, I will be buying this again at the end of the day and selling it first thing tomorrow morning. And that is it. That is it. Let's see what the markets are doing here. So, okay, the Dow Jones up 18 points. NASDAQ down 46. So, all right. Should be interesting to see what happens at the end of the day with the big earnings coming up. And like I said, what the big, mar what the big financial guys are gonna be doing towards the end of the day. Um, all right. So listen, this is the type of time of the podcast where I like to do a few minutes on trader psychology. I think it's very, very important that you hear something about trading psychology and emotions each day, because in the long run, it's really going to dictate whether or not you're going to be successful in this game or not. Managing your emotions is the most important thing. Think of it as a skill. Think of it as a skill that you want to develop and you know if everything's going great you think oh yeah yeah i need to think of it as a skill but you will know 
if you get into a drawdown or you get into a losing period, you will feel that frustration build up and you're like, dang, I just traded great for two weeks and then in three days it wiped out my profit. Yeah, I know it happens. It sucks, right? But that is part of trading and that is the danger area. That's the danger zone when you get frustrated and go, well, you know, it's got to go back up. Uh, I'm going to take a larger position here. I can make this back up pretty quickly just with a day or two bounce. But that is the downfall, people, because if that doesn't work out for you and very likely it will not, then you've dug yourself a deeper hole and that's when all hell can break loose. That's when, you know, your reptilian brain comes out, your fight or flight, and that's when you can really make some bad decisions. So, you know, understand that this might happen to you and very likely will. And in my opinion, the best way to counteract that is just position size correctly. Use each um you know, each trade, think of it as the next thousand trades. So you don't just put too much energy or hope into one trade, right? So, all right. Um, uh, this is from uh, Trading Composure on Twitter. I do like to go through Twitter. There's a few channels that are really great. They put out great, great information about trading psychology and Trading Composure is one of the best at Trading Composure on Twitter if you have not uh, uh, subscribe to him on Twitter. I would really suggest you do. And I would really suggest that you read all of his posts because they are excellent. Uh, but trading composure says, relax the neediness and let the market show you its hands. When you badly want something to happen, it is very easy to conceive yourself that you are actually seeing what you want to see. And this is so true. You know, for some reason you may want to get into, I don't know, Twitter really bad, right? You just may want to get into Twitter. You may want to get into Amazon. And by the fact that you really want to get in it, I think it's going to affect your judgment when you look at the technicals, when you look at the possible entry signals, and you may relax your criteria because you wanted to get into it anyway. You know, the best trades are the ones that really jump out off the screen. When I studied one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Elder, he said, look, you know, the best trades are the one that just bam, come flying at you off of the screen instead of you getting in there and getting all creative and, you know, trying to make a signal happen when it's really not there. So, you know, relax the neediness, let the market show you its hands. Don't be needy. Just wait for a good setup. Wait for something that looks really good and then take the trade. But don't try to, you know, make a trade or a signal look better than it really is. So be really objective about it. So thank you, Trade and Composure, as always, for your great posts. Uh, let me take a look real quick. Okay. All righty, where am I? Okay, Jesse says, have been in, in Goldman Sachs since the 520 cross, performing decent, have had nice intraday gains last few days, but give them up and but give them up end of day, but still up. Merck took a dump on me today. We'll be offloading B I I B. We'll be offloading. Did you have BIIB, Jesse? Or is that something to look at? <laughs> wow, look at BIIB. They must have, oh, it was earnings, of course. So this is one of those situations where earnings really would have paid off. However, let's look at something like McDonald's. Imagine if you had gambled on McDonald's today. Boom, right? So let's look at Merck. Oh yeah, geez, Merck's not looking so hot today. Um, you know what? I don't know why my chart does this. I have to turn it off and turn it back on. Let's make sure this works here. Oh yeah, Merck. 
so I know you took this I know you took this v2 here moved up a little so this is one of those ones unfortunately I don't know if there was some kind of news probably most likely on a day like today sometimes you get news and so in this particular case you know did it hit your five percent and five percent emergency stop looks pretty close but this is one of those situations where if you'd have taken this and it goes down big you know at some point you can't wait for the end of the day you have to put in your emergency stop my emergency stop is no matter what part of the day it happens five percent below my entry i gotta go ahead and just get out and this is unfortunate but you know this is a good time to bring up position size you know if you took a 10 percent position size right on this trade then you know you lose 3.75 percent that means you only lost 0.375 of your total capital right so this is unfortunate but if you position size correctly it's just really not that big a deal right it's still not fun but it's really not going to hurt your trading capital account if you position size but if you would have gone in here imagine if you would have gone in with leverage instead of 10 percent position size you took a 200 percent position size so yeah, that's unfortunate. Did bounce off the 200 day moving average. So yeah, this is probably something if I were in, I would definitely get out as well because the market is definitely telling us that it does not, not want it today. <laughs> Jesse says, I wish. Hey, Bing, he, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Kurt, glad, uh, glad we got our emails there. But yeah, sorry, I couldn't do that back test on ETF because it's just one that they don't allow. Um, and glad to hear you're being patient. Um, being he's our friend from Singapore. Hope you're doing well, Marco. Hope you're doing well. Uh, hey, Greg. Jesse says, I wish one question. What's right, Greg or Greg? I use two G's, G R E G G, Marco. Jesse says, new Alzheimer med released. Ah, that makes sense. Some kind of news. And I think there was earnings too, right? Jesse said, stayed above emergency stop. Kirk says, yes, I'm looking for great setups now. I've learned not to force a trade thanks to you proving to me that it almost never works in your favor it's true it just doesn't seriously if you guys are feel like you have to force the trade please let everybody know so everybody can take the opposite side because pretty high probability that uh taking the opposite side of that trade will be the right move super small loss on merc it happens on to the next one that's right one of the next thousand Murat, hey buddy, good to see you, sir. Murat's our friend from Norway. Thank you for coming. Hey, Frank. Hello, Greg. I took a small position in Disney because of possible catalyst and Netflix deal. I'm up a bit. Yeah, I saw Disney earlier. It's looking good. It is looking good. You're welcome, Marco. So, all right. Well, let's take a look here. Let's go through. There's a kind of a lot of stuff to look at and a lot of stuff to point out today. So let's get started. Uh, Apple. So Apple, <laughs> Apple just keeps moving on up. And this is one of those ones where, um, you know, this just has not allowed any entry. There was a nice V1 back here in the value zone, but the way I trade, I was not allowed to take it because this bar was larger than one ATR. We didn't have any sidewards movement, but of course that would have been, <laughs> that would have been a monster trade if I did. But you know, you can always look back at stuff you should not have taken and it works. It doesn't mean you should take it in the future. So uh, we're at 7244 RSI. We're above the 70, meaning very, very strong. I would have to wait for some kind of pullback at the very least into value, possibly move back down to the 50 if there was a good RSI confluence or, you know, have the five cross under the 20 and then back over. So, you know, this is one that just left us behind, but it happens, right? So uh the best the best idea is is if you have something that's left you behind don't get frustrated and short it right because that's a lot of people think that way if you missed a big move you're gonna okay well i'll get it back on the short well it's going up strong for a reason but anyway i would look for a pullback into value five crossing under the 20 and then back over something like that and uh, you know that may happen when we have earnings uh adobe wow big 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 bar to the downside v1 to the downside bearish engulfing bar to the downside um we're at a 35 47 rsi so you know if we can get down under 30 back over 30 that is where i would take a stab at adobe giving me a good risk to reward but you know there's probably not a lot of buyers stepping in here there's a lot of buyers thinking the same thing i'm going to see if it goes down to the 30 then i'll step in so it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, it certainly could go up here. I, I don't know that for sure. 
But, you know, if we measure to where tomorrow the 30 RSI is going to be, <laughs> close to there. And so, you, you know, you'd have some kind of confluence of a 30 RSI right here. What I really like to see is this go under 30, back over 30, under the third, back over the third. That would, that would make me feel even better about the trade. So just going to hold tight on Adobe and see if I can get that 30 RSI dip. Uh, AMD uh, inside bar today, um, you know, yesterday got up to that third ATR channel, which 90% of the time prices stay below the third, the third ATR channel. They stay above the negative third ATR channel. So I don't have advanced micro devices here, but as it gets up here to this third ATR channel, I would definitely be kind of having my finger on the trigger ready to sell. So we've had this nice move up. I'd like to see it move back into the value zone. It's above value right now. I don't want to buy above value. I want to buy a pullback back into value and ideally with a V1 or a V2. So nothing on advanced micro devices. Um, Amazon did reject the 200 day. There were no more buyers up there. Then we had the big down day. We've rallied a little bit kind of inside bars. We do have earnings coming up. So, you know, and, uh, probably one of the best back tested approaches for Amazon is when the five, uh, crosses over the 50 simple moving average. It's not there yet. Uh, but I imagine after earnings, if it heads up, then that will trigger. And depending on where we are in the channel here, um, I may consider that when that crossover happens, but only if we're, you know, maybe one and a half ATRs. Uh, but if we get up to two ATRs, three ATRs, I, I, that's my filter. I just won't take it. So, um, anyway, we are back in value and we do have earnings coming up this week. So nothing on Amazon at the moment. Uh, Boeing, look at this. So yesterday we had that big move down. We tested the sixth ATR channel, closed back above, was still under 30. Today it's it it looks like it might close above 30. So does that mean we buy it? Well, if if we didn't have earnings tomorrow morning, I would certainly consider it. But earnings are tomorrow morning, so you know, I can't do it. You know, I mean, is this a valid signal? Yeah, it went under 30, over 30, you know, bounced off the six ATR channel. That's all good. But because we have earnings tomorrow, I can't do it. And, you know, again, this may be a time for the, uh, for Boeing to just get, go way up and you're like, dang, I wish I would have gambled on earnings, but it might go crashing down another 5%. And then you'd be glad that you didn't gamble on earnings. And I use the word gamble specifically and on purpose because that's really what it is. We're not in the gambling business. We're in the odds business. Remember that, right? We're playing the odds, not gambling. And if you gamble before earnings, or if you take a position before earnings, unless you have some kind of inside information, you are gambling. So nothing on Boeing, but you know, might be interesting tomorrow. You know, tomorrow, if earnings are bad, we might go under 30 and then close back above. Then we have earnings behind us. So nothing on Boeing. Johnny, hey, good to see you, Johnny. Johnny says, I got a UNH today, so you can stop trying to remember who has it in our group. <laughs> okay, good. I did remember it was you, though. I did go through the charts earlier, and I was like, oh, good for Johnny. So fantastic. That was a great trade. We'll get to it here in a second, but congratulations, and I like that you're selling it on strength, Johnny. Frank says, I love this quote from Larry Height. I don't see markets. I see risks, rewards, and money. And speaking of Larry Height, guys, I've been reading his book, uh, listening to his book on audiobook. It's called The Rule. And Steve Burns actually uh, was on the back of the cover giving his comments on the book. Larry Height asked Steve to do that, which is a, a really great, right? I mean, it's a real honor to have Larry Height have you review his book. But it's an excellent book, you guys. It's called The Rule. And it's on audio audible.com. I'm sure you can just buy the book on Amazon, but uh, it's a great book. And he talks a lot about asymmetrical risk to reward, everything we talk about, positioning yourself. So if you're wrong, you're wrong small. And if you're right, you have good upside potential. So I was glad to hear that. And, uh, you know, he also talked about 
doing risk to rewards, big upsides, small downsides, not just in trading, but in life, in your love life, in your business life. It's a great book, man. I mean, you guys should read it. You should seriously read it. He's a market wizard, very successful trader, very famous. So it's called The Rule and you can get an audio book or you can get, uh, you can get the regular book. But yeah, I see risk, reward, and money. Hey, Mount Doji, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. So, all right, Caterpillar. Uh, Caterpillar, very, very strong. But again, of course, we're at the third ATR channel. I consider this overvalued. I'm not going to buy in va value. I really prefer to buy some kind of dip at value or below value. So nothing today. It looks like we have earnings tomorrow. Uh, the diamonds, DIA. Um, just hanging out here in value. I don't think this is a correct tick. I, I don't think we went up that big that day, uh, but uh, nothing here. Disney. All right, so this was Frank. Frank got Disney, fantastic. Um, I would point out if I did buy Disney for whatever reason, I would probably get out of it today because it rejected the 50 day moving average above. I'm not, I'm not giving you advice, Frank. I, I'm just saying if it were me and I had bought, you know, down here for whatever reason today, I, this, this would probably be my signal, but it's not advice. It could keep racing up, but just the way that I trade, you know, I would, I don't like how it's rejected the 50 RSI here, still holding a 50 uh, not the 50 RSI, the 50 day moving average. It rejected the 50 day moving average. So um, be better if it closed above for sure. But congratulations, good trade. Uh, Etsy was above value. It's come back into value, still moving down. I'd like to see this move sideways. Look for a V1 or a V2. Ford Motor Company, uh, under the 200, back over the 200, did hold it yesterday. Seems like it's holding it today, which is positive, definitely for sure. But we do have earnings coming up tomorrow, so I'm going to have to pass on Ford. Uh, you know, if Ford comes out with earnings and it comes back into the value zone, see how we're above the value zone. If it comes back into the value zone, move sideways, look for some kind of V1, V2. That's what would get me interested in Ford. Um, Facebook, big down day today. Uh, not quite sure why I didn't really look at the news or anything. Um, we did, we did have a five, not, excuse me. We did have a 1050 crossover yesterday and the, which is a good valid back tested approach on Facebook. But if you remember, I didn't take the trade because we were near the second ATR channel. Now, this might have been some kind of news, had nothing to do with anything. And I, I, I really don't know. But the reason I passed on the trade was because we were near the second ATR channel. I do like crossover trades. Uh, but again, they have to happen underneath in the value zone, maybe up to the one and a half ATR channel, but this was just too high. So this is one of those fortunate situations, you know, that I didn't take the trade. But if you did take the trade, it's fine. It's a valid back tested approach just with the, you know, and sometimes it works for me and sometimes it works against me. And that's just how it goes. I could have just gone racing up and I would have missed out like I did on Apple. And, you know, that's the, the, the yin and yang of trading, but you know, we are still under the five, uh, the, excuse me, the 1050 crossover, which is positive. We are back in the value zone, which is positive. I mean, could I go ahead and buy it today? Well, I could because the, the 1050 cross is still crossed over, which is good. And I would just be getting a better price, but I don't like the price action of what happened today. So, you know, we're back in the value zone. We're under the 1050 cross. If we could get some kind of sidewards movement and, you know, a decent V1, V2, I would get back in the trade at that point. Five below, we were over the one ATR channel. So what I considered overvalued, I don't want to buy up here and you know, good thing that I didn't. So we are coming back into value. I need some sidewards movement, V1, V2, and maybe we can go back up and test this higher, even move higher. So nothing there. Uh, gold, you know, we had this previous low, we tested this low, rejected this low, we've come back down. Looks like we do have a higher low V1 at this point, uh, but the here's day one, day two, day two washes out day one. It looks like 
might close above day one, although not for sure. So technically this would be a higher low V1. This is higher than this low, but it's not in the value zone and yesterday's bar, day one's bar is larger than one ATR. So I'm not able to take this trade. Uh, gold, uh, it's just really, it's, well, it's essentially moving sideways, really, if you look at it over like the past seven, seven days. So it is moving sideways. I do expect this to move strong one way or the other. Just don't know when and I don't know in what direction. Uh, if the five EMA crosses back over the 20 EMA, that will be my signal to go ahead and get in this trade. That's a good back tested, proven approach to trading gold when the five EMA crosses over the 20 EMA. And you know, if it happens way up here, I just won't take the trade. But if it happens in the value zone or lower, I will definitely take it. Uh, Google. So Google did have a crossover. Let's see, what day was that that it had the crossover? Did it happen that day? No. All right. So it happened yesterday, the 550 crossover. No, excuse me, the 1030 crossover. 1030 crossover on Google. Um, I didn't take the trade because even though we're really not too high in the channels, it happened barely above the one ATR channel. I, that's okay. But I don't like that we had this previous high here. We had a false breakout to the upside and then we closed below. So that is technically a false breakout. We broke out the new highs of the range and we closed back in. So that's why I went ahead and passed on this crossover. Um, the crossover, the 1030 crossover is still in place. You know, when you have a crossover and it's too extended, I like to let it go, but then I like to look for a pullback into value and then have a V1, V2. Having a V1 or V2 in value while the crossover just recently happened is even better than having just a regular V1, V2 with no crossover or being crossed under. So um, I'll be looking for some kind of some kind of move down in here for Google, but nothing nothing on Google today. Goldman Sachs, great. That's what Jesse has. Jesse took this five, 520 EMA crossover. This was a really nice V1 here uh, after earnings. I didn't, I didn't take this because uh, I already, I had MasterCard at the same time, but this has turned out to be really nice trade. It's definitely more than one ATR away from the entry. So if I had this trade, I would be looking to implement some kind of trailing stop at this point, you know, close below the previous day's low, rejection of the 70 RSI, rejection of, uh, you know, some kind of previous high, something like that. So uh, nice job, Jesse. Sorry about the Merck trade, but you know, that's how it goes. Sounds like there was, uh, you got newsed a little bit on that one, but the key is keeping a small position size. So if you do have, you know, a bad trade like that, that it doesn't affect you big picture and you know, you, you stay in the game. Uh, IBB, um, I didn't take this crossover, wish I would have in hindsight for sure. If I had taken this crossover, the 520 crossover, I definitely would be uh, most likely getting out today with this huge rejection of the 200 day moving average. Looks like we are higher than yesterday's close, but we are definitely lower than the open. That's a bearish reversal bar. That's not very bullish. So nothing there on uh, IBB. How are we doing on time? All right. Intel has earnings coming, coming up in a couple days. Did have a V2 yesterday, but the V2 is not valid. It's too high in the channel. And day one was larger than one ATR. Uh, IWM, of course, we bought over the 200 day moving average. It's been moving up nicely. Um, did not hit one profit target. We are more than one ATR away from my entry. So at this point, uh, I will stop, start trailing this with a close below the previous day's low. Johnson and Johnson had that big down move. Uh, Kurt and Jesse and Anthony, if you're watching, remember when we have big down bars like this, very likely we're going to rally to halfway and run into some Fibonacci resistance approximately what happened. It tried to get to about halfway of this bar and then failed. So nothing on Johnson and Johnson. Coca-Cola had great earnings and then it reversed back down. 
we are back in the value zone. Uh, looks like we have kind of held support here for a couple days. So going forward, if the borrows continue to narrow and I get some kind of V1, V2, I'll be ready to go. But nothing today. <sighs> Lockheed Martin. So Lockheed Martin's interesting. And if you guys know anything about triple screen from Dr. Alexander Elder, you, you look at charts in three time frames. You look at them like for me, I look at the monthly, the weekly and the daily and monthly, which is the largest. Is this in an uptrend? Absolutely is in an uptrend. Do uptrends have moves back into the value zone? Yes, they do. So if you look at the weekly chart, the intermediate term chart, see how we're right back down in the value zone. So, you know, monthly having a nice big, you know, certainly an uptrend, right? No one can say that's not an uptrend. On the intermediate time frame, we are back at down into value zone, which is what I like. This is what this was, what looks good. So, you know, when you have that two setups, and then you look at the daily, you look for an entry. Well, You know, this, this may have an entry here. This may be like the super duper duper V1 of all time. Uh, so this one could be possible here. What's the closing price? 374.05. And if you guys have any other, you know, I, I'll talk a little bit more about triple screen in a minute. It's not, it's not a huge thing, but I did notice this is perfect triple screen. Long-term trend up, intermediate term in the value zone. And then I'd want to, you know, to get in the trade, I'd want to go on the daily, but I have to look for some kind of potential. And, you know, it's at a 3840 RSI. So, you know, where would my 50 RSI, where would my theoretical profit target be tomorrow? The 50 would be about there. And then my stop would be a halfway of the washout bar. Oops. My stop would be halfway of the washout bar, which would be about here. So does it give me two to one? Let's see. So it gives me about a 1.06 theoretical loss and it gives me a two. Yeah, I mean, you know, close enough. It's about two to one. It's close to two to one. So, um, you know, might be interesting on Lockheed Martin. Let me quickly run some numbers on this. So again, they had earnings and uh, it did get right to the 30 RSI intraday, I believe. Uh, so probably no surprise, but I, I'll watch this at the end of the day. Whew, look at MasterCard, everybody. Pretty brutal, pretty brutal. So if we're to 38 RSI, you know, I, I would be looking to see if we could get a confluence of a 30 RSI in a third ATR channel. That is what I would be looking for right down in here. And that might be a really good dip buy on MasterCard, but nothing there today. I'm not sure what's going on with MasterCard, but pretty nasty. McDonald's. Oh. So obviously the, the market did not like the, um, the earnings of McDonald's it's down four and a half percent. We're to 32.99. Uh, boy, if you know, right here at the 200 day would look very interesting. If we could go under 30, back over 30, under the 200, back over the 200, that would be fantastic. It would be, doesn't mean that the, it would be a profitable trade, but would it would give us a good risk to reward ratio, right? If we could buy right above the 200 and if it closed below, we get out. But you know, if, it, if it's able to recover, you know, we could have three, four times to the upside, but that's pretty nasty today. Hey, I see your I see your comments there about the 250 day and the 200 day and why they don't match up. And the reason why, guys, is on some trading platforms, some platforms adjust for dividends 
and some do not. Mine are adjusted for dividends, so it takes the dividends out of the price. And I have that option with Trade Navigator. On a lot of platforms, you don't have that trade. You don't have that. That is why we're going to see discrepancies where my 200 is and when you're, where your 200 is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that mine's better than yours or vice versa. Just trade what you have on your charts and be consistent, right? You don't want to look at my charts and take a take a trade and then base your exit on your chart. So you have to do it based upon your charts. In the long run, it all washes out. So that's why, and we can talk more about that after, but I saw that. So McDonald's, I'm looking for under 30, over 30, bounce of the 200, something like that would be good, but nothing today. Uh, Altria, super strong. This is the trade that got away from me down here. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> but there we go. It's cranking. It's cranking. Uh, so there's Merck. There's uh, the one that Jesse had, unfortunately. And um, probably some of that other news with maybe that other company is what hurt Merck. Maybe some kind of competition. But anyway, yeah, I would definitely be getting out of that today. Microsoft, you know, we were above value, into value, moving sidewards. V1 engulfing bar to the downside is not positive. We've lost the 50 RSI. Uh, earnings are coming up, so don't want to get involved with uh, Microsoft at this point. Netflix, um, we were above value. I'd like to see this move sidewards. V1, V2, rejecting the 180R channel would be great. Uh, okay, Nike. Uh, it's Nike strong, but it's above value. Need to see it come into the value zone. Philip Morris down a little bit today. Very strong. Did lose the 70 RSI, however. PayPal, my goodness. Look at that, everybody. Uh, we do have a double bottom with the bullish divergence, but we have earnings coming up. So I really can't do anything before earnings. Uh, the Qs, of course, we have on that 520 crossover, still in the money, still phased out at higher levels. I don't like what, how this looks. I don't like that we rejected, you know, uh, these highs over here. I don't like the V1 to the downside. I don't like the, bull, the bearish engulfing candle to the downside. However, this is a mechanical trade, so I have to trade it mechanically. I have to follow my plan, and my plan was stay in it as long as the 5 is above the 20 and phase out or get out when the five crosses back below the 20. Uh, the SPY, of course, we had that nice overnight trade, much lower now. I will be buying that again at the end of the day. Uh, TLT showing a little bit of bounce off the third ATR channel, not quite low enough for me here, but definitely a big sell-off so far. Tesla has earnings tomorrow, can't get involved there. Twitter, um, yeah, so we did have a nice V2 yesterday. You know, the reason I didn't take it, one of the reasons we have the earnings coming up pretty close, and then we also, this was a lower low, and lower lows tend to fail more often than higher lows. But see how this was lower than here, but it was a nice V2, did move sideways. I mean, pretty, pretty good, all in all. Um, if I, if I had taken that trade yesterday, the previous days halfway would, would be my uh, reason to get out. So uh, I would, you know, if I had the trade, I would have gotten out today because it looks like we're going to close below halfway of the washout bar. Then we have earnings coming up. UNH, this is Johnny's. Look at Johnny. Johnny gets some monster trades. He seriously does, and he got out today. Good for you. Good for you, Johnny. So I'm not sure where you bought this, uh, but you had a monster run, so congratulations. But too high for me, obviously. Uh, oil. You know, I talked about the possibility of taking this higher low V1 yesterday. We worked out the risk to reward. Our risk would have been a close below halfway. Our reward would have been a rejection of the 50 RSI. I didn't take it because it was more of a one-to-one. -one. Looks like it would have worked out. Right now we're at 49.65 RSI. So if I had taken this trade and it closes below 50, I would have gotten out. If it closed above, um, I would stay in. But I didn't take the trade, but just wanted to point that out. Uh, VIX. Look at this, guys. We have a V1 bounce off of the one ATR channel. Uh, excuse me, the third ATR channel. So, uh, you know, as far as the market as a whole, this is pretty bullish for VIX. Bounce off the third ATR channel. 
V1, you know, that's somewhat bearish for the market. I'm not going to do anything here, but just wanted to point that out. Verizon, nothing there. Uh, Walmart. All right. So guys, I haven't had a short position in a long time, but I believe I am going to take one today. And the reason why is because we have a multiple group of signals coming here. We have a high here. MACD is very high over here. We do go down, then we make a higher high. You see how much lower these green bars are from these bars? That shows momentum is slowing. Then we have false breakout to the upside with the bearish divergence. And we come back down, we attempt to rally. We fail with a big large bar, larger than one ATR bar to the downside, V1 to the downside. We have a lower high here. Yesterday, we attempt to rally. We attempt to rally into a big, deep, large bar. We get to about halfway of that bar. And today, we have a V1 to the downside. So again, double top, bearish divergence, lower high with an attempted rally in that stops about the halfway today we have a revert we have a v1 to the downside so i am going to short this <laughs> it's been a long time since i've had a short position but as long as we close under yesterday's close i will short it so as long as it closes under 119.74 um, you know, my ultimate profit target on this will probably be the 50 day moving average. I'll see where the 50 RSI is below. If, we're, if we go down, reject that 50, go back up, I will cover. And then, you know, where is going to be the, uh, where is going to be the stop? Well, my stop will be halfway of the washout bar, which will be about right there. So it gives me a really good reward if I'm right, really small if I'm wrong. So I will be shorting my Walmart. I know that sounds weird coming out of my mouth, right? But that is a good setup. I've been waiting patiently for that setup. Double top, bearish divergence, higher low, V1 trigger to the downside. Energy, big strong day, nothing there. Um, finance, nothing, real estate, no, utilities, no. So the only possibility for me today is Lockheed Martin, and I already have my order into short uh, Merck. So Lockheed Martin, 374.05. So I guess I better get that queued up in case Okay. All right. So I already have my order in for to short to short uh, um, Walmart, and I'm looking here at three seventy four oh five, but it's going to have to close above that in order for me to take this V one uh, on Lockheed Martin. So we shall see. And Walmart over here with the close below 119.74. Three seventy four oh five, getting pretty close. One minute, and what about Walmart? Walmart looks like it's going to close below three seventy four oh five. Walmart is fine, it looks like. And I don't think that's getting close. 
Got 15 seconds. Okay, so it didn't trigger. It didn't trigger. All right, so nothing on Lockheed Martin. All right, so I did short Walmart here at... one nineteen fifty seven. So short position, haven't had one of these in a long time. V1 to the downside, washout bar is today's bar. Halfway of that washout bar will be my stop. So if I'm wrong to the upside, theoretically I'm wrong small. And if I'm wrong, right to the downside, I have lots of uh, movement to the downside. All right, and then where did we buy SPY today? 299.01. So glad that we hit, you know hit a yearly high, all time high on the overnight spy trade today. And you can see you know we bought it 299 yes to yesterday, sold it 363, and then we entered re-entered again today 299.01. All right, so IWM pulled back a lot. Too bad we didn't get that profit target. Close below today's low, I will be getting out. Q's mechanical, so nothing there till the five crosses back below the 20. Re-entered the SPY today at 299.01, and Walmart took the short position at 119.57, so we have a short position we haven't had. I think we've had three short positions since I've been doing this podcast. And I think we made money on two and lost money on one. So I'm okay with the, those, those odds. So we'll see what happens with Walmart. Oh boy, I feel like I've been talking forever. You guys are probably like, stop. <laughs> So listen, before we get to questions and answers, I do want to just quickly put in my daily little plug, let everybody know that I do offer private one-on-one -on -one coaching, teaching, and mentoring lessons at nighttime via Skype. And you know, what I do here on the podcast, I teach you everything I know, but the real advantage of doing the one-on-one -on -one is the interaction back and forth, right? I, I teach, ask you questions, you know, you have to teach it back to me, puts you on the spot, and it really shows me whether or not you really understand what I'm talking about. So when you, if you do live lessons with me, there's lots of back and forth. You know, I have you break down charts, analyze this chart, what's positive, what's negative, what's the risk to reward ratio, you know, what's your plan? I help you put together a real solid plan as far as, you know, position sizing, looking for red flags, uh, you know, in your trading, when to possibly get out. Um, you know, we talk about trader psychology and, you know, I've had really good success with my students. I really have. And, you know, they come out of it much with a much better understanding of what really trading is about and how I trade when we do the one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, if you feel like maybe you're ready for one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons, uh, I think you'll enjoy them. I really do. I think you'll think it was worth the investment. I think it is a good investment in really learning a skill. So if you're interested, please reach out to me. My email is in the description of this video, or you can send me a message on Twitter. Um, and then, you know, if you are interested, but not sure, then I like to do like about a 30, 40 minute Skype call with potential clients just so that they can ask me questions. I can ask them questions. How'd you get into trading? What are your challenges? What do you think you're doing wrong? What are your goals? You know, and then I'll put together that plan for you. And then, you know, if it feels like a fit, there's no obligation, I promise you, at, from the Skype call, it's totally free. But if it feels like a fit and I feel like it's a fit on my end with you as well, then we'll go ahead and we'll schedule. So, um, but 
anyway, if you're interested, let me know. And then if you like today's podcast if or live stream, whatever we want to call it, you know, if you are learning something, you think it's a value, you know, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. It helps Google or YouTube promote it out to more people, gets more people in here. And there's a lot of people out, out there that have a lot of problems with trading. It negatively affects their life, their financial life, their family life, their personal life. And, you know, I feel like if, the more people to come to this channel and start learning about good risk reward principles and good technicals, I feel like it will improve. So you can help me help them by literally just hitting the thumbs up button. So if you do that, I would certainly appreciate it. Okay, there we go. Plug is out of the way. Market's over. This is my favorite time of the day of the podcast and I can relax for a little bit. So let's go and take a look at some questions. Murat says, Greg, I sent you my long crude oil trade. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, maybe you sent it on. Let's take a look. share this over here. We can take a look and see what Mert's doing. Exit. Oh, look at that. Exit with 2% gain before the Brexit voting. Bought again at the cross of the two zones. So you bought it here where the price tends to turn. I bought at the wrong place. I I should have waited one more bar, even was it the same price. Price expanded due to OPEC cut announcement. Number four, still holding. Oh, oh, you exited here at one. You bought at two. Here three is where it expanded to the announcement. Still holding target 61.75. So you bought here. And now it's here. Fantastic, Murat. Murat's a clever trader, man. I'll tell you what. I got to hand it to Murat. Murat does some really good analysis, uh, the way he looks at the market. I'm always impressed with Murat's trades. Jackson says, another example, Merck, which hit your 200 SMA, but on my software and barchart.com, it is the 250. Yeah, that's what I was talking about before, uh, Jackson. Um, look, if I, if I change my uh, settings over to, see how it says show prices unsplit? Yours are unsplit. So if I move mine to unsplit, See how it's different? And it probably looks exactly like yours. So that's probably what yours looks like. And mine looks different. But again, just because mine show this doesn't mean mine are right, right? Whatever you have with your software, just be consistent with it. But you can't look at mine for an X an entry and then base yours on your charts. You, you have to base your trades on consistently on what your charts show. Does that make sense, Jackson? Frank says, Maharashi Yogi once said, do, do less, accomplish more. Sounds like good trading advice. Yeah. I'm, t <laughs> I'm telling you, when it comes to trading, the, the simpler you can keep it, the better. I mean, look at the simple overnight spy trade. A lot less work than everything I do. And been best one of the best performers, you know. I mean, that just goes to show you right there. So, I you know I think if people looked at their charts and said, "I am not taking a trade unless it is really great, really good, really jumps off," uh, you're not going to have as many trades. But of course, the more trades you have, 
you know, a percentage of those are going to be losers. So just by not taking as many trades, you're going to have fewer, lower, fewer losers, right? Murat says, Locky tested 100. Yeah, it did. It did test the 100 and you could buy it there, Murat. Uh, it's just that I would, I would like the entry price of Lockheed Martin to be closer to the 30 RSI at the same time it's closer to the 100 day moving average. We went down and I'm not sure where we got today, how low we got about a 30 RSI. Imagine that, right? So buyers stepped in. So, uh, but you know, if I would have bought intraday using the 30, obviously it would have worked out really well. And it did test the 30 and it did go back over but I would like to see the price be near 30 at the same time it's near the 100 day moving average. Now we're at 38.66. So I'm not saying it's not a, a good move. And I was going to buy it today if we triggered the V1. I would have because the risk to reward would have been decent, would have been about two to one. But um, that was my, my final filter on this trade was whether or not we closed above yesterday's close and we weren't able to do that. So if we had, I would have felt better about the trade. Bill Richardson. Hey, Greg, how you doing, Bill? Nice to see you. Thank you for coming by. I've been listening every day. If you have a minute, can you check out ALXN? I have it undervalued and is currently in the value zone. Sank. Sure. Let's take a look. So what's going on here, Bill, is yes, we are in the value zone. However, we now have made a lower high. This was a big down bar on large volume. A lot of supply came into, into this. Mount Doji, if you're listening or some of my students are listening, now that we've made a lower high, in order for me to get interested after a lower high situation, I have to wipe, I have to wash out this previous low. This is gonna be somewhat of a magnet here. A lot of people put their stops in here and a lot of times the market uh, will abide and, and oblige to people to test their stops. Uh, so I would not buy with this big down bar for one. It's larger than one ATR. A lot of, a lot of supply has come into the market. We have a lower high and we have earnings coming up here. You know, real quick, what I would be looking for if I was to buy this pharmaceutical company based upon this is a test of this previous low down here and having a bullish Mac, uh, bullish MACD divergence, double bottom with the bullish MACD divergence. So at this point right now, either one, I'd have to wash out this low, have it move sideways V1, V2, but uh, really my honest opinion is somewhere down in the 94 range is where I would be looking to buy this if I got a signal. Still, have to, still would have to have a signal, but if we could get down here, we would have a double bottom with a bullish divergence and then look for some kind of V1, V2 entry. But I wouldn't do anything with it here, Bill. Steve says, great to see 31 people on the stream today. Oh, is that how many we have? Oh, that's great. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, that is good. I remember when we had three and four. I remember when it was Dr. Jorgensen and I only. <laughs> so thank you. I mean, thanks for you guys for making it possible. And it's great to have our you know, our regular, our regular crew and, you know, it, 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 it is growing and which is good because that's, you know, that's why I started this channel. And I've told you this before, but, you know, I started this channel really to help people give them kind of some kind of perspective, but in a weird karmic way, uh, it's helped me a lot because with me going through these charts every day and going down and repeating every single chart, like it's laborious on my end, right? It's, I'm sure it's laborious on your end to hear it, but by me going through each chart so specifically talking about everything and teaching you, it helps my trading as well. There's things I catch that I wouldn't catch because normally I would just whip down through things real quick. If I wasn't teaching, I'd just go, no, 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 maybe no, no. But you know, it, it has helped my trading. I've never, I've never traded better uh, than when I do in this. So it's a win-win. Ch -ch -ch. 
UNH. I bought UNH less than 225, made 2%. Fantastic. I have this line here. I don't know why I have it here. Maybe is that where you bought? 217.33. I'm not sure why I have that line there, but fantastic. Oh, no, no, no. I bought it here when we had this under 30, over 30. Oh, yeah, that's right. This was one of my trades. Where did I get out? I can't remember. I think I got out here before earnings. Nice trade, John. Marit says, at Bill Richardson, I look at it for my curiosity. If it breaks the long-term support down, then there's nothing more to hold. Please see the descending triangle risk reward. John says, I miss the English guy. Me too. I miss that dude. But I, I, I changed, I changed uh, brokers because of the commissions. Mount Doji says, TIVO had an interesting engulfing candle, but, is on the, but it is on the smaller side. Oh, that's not even close. Yeah, good call, Mount Doji. This is one of those tough ones because we did go outside the value zone. We did come back into the value zone. We've only had one day sidewards movement, but MACD is positive. We do have a nice V1. In addition to that, it is a bullish engulfing candle. It's a little close to the one ATR channel. It's just a little too close for me to buy there, I believe, um, especially with that big old bar there as well. But you're getting good, Mount OG. You, you really spend some good time finding these V1s, V2s. And because I use the same watch list, I sometimes, I mean, I don't see some of the ones that you had. I mean, didn't you have, was core, right? I mean, look at this trade. Look at this trade Mount OG had here. Beautiful V1. I mean, we moved, you know, we had a lower high, but we washed out that low. We moved sidewards. We had a beautiful V1, closed above all the moving average, uh, V2. Yeah, V1, closed above all the moving averages, closed above 50 RSI, and what a great trade. I mean, what a great trade. You still have that trade, Mount Doji? STLD. All right, so steel dynamics. Um, V1. Bullish engulfing candle. Again, for me, a little close to the 1 ATR channel. And this bar here was larger than 1 ATR. On the, uh, on the bright side, we did close above 50. So anyway, I mean, it's good, right? I mean, we better than buying overvalue, you know, but good. You know, it's a V1. I'd probably use halfway to the washout bar as my stop. See how it reacts around the 200. Oh, you got it in intraday. Okay. Oh, you're welcome, Murat. I truly mean it. You are a good trader, my friend. Very, how should I say, you know, the way the way that you look at things like an engineer. But I think you are an engineer, right? I think you, and, I think you are an engineer, I think. Mount Doji says, luckily I got in. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can take V1s, V2s intradays. It's just that you'll have a little bit more up and down whipsaw. If you wait till the end of the day, it's more confirmation, but you'll have more lag. Mert says, if you are outperforming S&P with overnight buy and sell approach, that means that you are outperforming almost 90% of hedge funds. Just sent you the chart and Twitter. Yeah, well, the S&P does outperform 90% of hedge, hedge funds and mutual funds. Isn't that amazing? Hedge funds have... Hedge funds have underperformed the S&P over the past decade, but volatility has been lower. Yeah, so we sent a chart showing that the hedge funds have outperformed the S&P. Yeah, I mean, the S&P <laughs> is very strong, hard to beat, you know, and uh, it outperforms mutual funds. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you're in a mutual fund paying a couple percent, you're, they essentially have the same stocks that you do, right? So, you know, 
if it were me, I would definitely just, if I was buy and holder, I would just buy the S&P or SPY. You don't have as much management fees and it outperforms 90% of the mutual funds anyway. Murat says, one becomes expert by reading, by repeating only 10,000 hour formula. That's right. Whether you're trading, playing the guitar, throwing pitches, you know, you got to get those reps in. Bill says, great, probably less on technicals and more in that the financials would lead me to believe it is undervalued probably in the long term. I thought it was going to close above the 20. Thanks for looking. You're certainly welcome. You're certainly welcome, but I would I would be looking for that double bottom bill. That that's to me when I look at it, that's my first thought. Mount Doji does still have some core left. All right, good, glad to hear it. Have you been phasing out? I, it sounds like you have been phasing out a little bit. Look at that sweet trade Mount Doji had. Your podcast was awesome, by the way. Oh, good, great. Which one did you listen to, Mount Doji? Was it the was it the uh, uh, How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast or the Alpha Mind podcast? Oh, Snap Miss Earnings. I haven't looked at Snap for a while. Okay, this was yesterday's chart. Let me. Uh, not down too much. It's down a half percent in after hours. Amazon's down after hours. That probably means the queues are down after hours. Yes, they are. Okay, IWM down after hours. VIX is up. Oh, good. I'm glad you listened to the Alpha Mind one. Thank you, Mount Doji. I appreciate you listening. I hope you liked it. Hope you liked it. A lot of hot chewing gum talk. <laughs> yeah. We've got to come up with some trader gum. You know, one of the gums that one of my initial gums was called Buzz Gum. And uh, it had guarana in it, similar to caffeine. And so it was one of the first caffeine products, if you can believe that, back in the back in the early 90s. You know, now you have all these caffeine products, you know, obviously with all the drinks and everything. But back then, Buzz Gum was basically like the first caffeine gum. And boy, I'll tell you what, it really took off. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that, Jackson, that you found adjust data for dividends. Good. Then we'll have the same charts. Mount Doji says, I appreciate the shout out you gave. Yeah, I'm glad they gave me the opportunity to do that because I really appreciate you guys coming every day. I really, really do. So I did want to say hi. Oil is pushing up. All righty. Well, look at VIX. VIX really took off. I mean, bounced off the third ATR channel and a nice V137. Q's bullish engulfing. So we got our first, we got our, one of our first short trades in a long, long, long time on, on Walmart. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Now compared to going long, going short, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just, uh, in case Jesse and Kurt and Anthony, you know, the way I'm going to look at this is tomorrow, I'm going to look and say, where is the 50 RSI to the downside, right? So it's going to be probably here. So tomorrow, if it goes down, bounces off that because I'm short, I would go ahead, take that off. Now, that's my initial profit target. Where's my ultimate profit target? Well, that's a tough one. I could use either the one ATR channel or I could use the 50 day moving average. Uh, I probably would go with the one ATR channel. So that would be my ultimate profit target right there. So if I was doing, you know, the, the, the phase outs from here, of course, I would measure from here to here, 
do all my math, all the stuff that I taught you guys how to do. And then I would put in my, instead of taking this, take, taking the price and adding the 0.45 to it, I would minus. So tomorrow I'll have three profit targets to the downside. Was it before nicotine gum? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's a good question. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I don't remember getting the idea from nicotine gum though. I can tell you that. I can't remember, but we went on to make nicotine gums, Murat. We went, we actually went on to make nicotine gums ourselves. I'll tell you what, this doesn't have anything to do with trading, but we built a big chewing gum factory, state of the art stainless steel chewing gum manufacturing facility in Phoenix. And we, you know, we had this beautiful lab and I was traveling back and forth from Arizona to Utah. I went in the lab and there was this big bowl of gum and I was just used to, I was a gumaholic and I would go and just grab a handful and just jump, 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 jump. And so I just saw, oh, what's this? I smelled it, mm, smells pretty good, smells mint. So I just grabbed it out of the lab. I grabbed a handful, put it in my pocket, took a taxi to the airport. I'm chomping on the gum on the way to the airport. All of a sudden I start feeling really dizzy and really sick. And guess what I picked from the lab? <laughs> Nicotine gum. <laughs> I was so sick. I was so sick I could barely get on the plane. Bill says, by the way, since October 1st, when I really implemented your technicals, I'm about 80% winning trades. That's fantastic, Bill. So glad to hear that. Better than me, I'm at about 71% winning trades right now. Uh, but that's over the long run. That's for the year. So that's fantastic. That That's music to my ears, Bill. Really glad to hear that. Reminds me from a scene from Thank You for Smoking. I watched that. I know exactly the scene you're talking about. Smoking saved my life when <laughs> they put all those patches on it. <laughs> yes. Uh, here's the thing, Murat. I, you know, over the last few years, I actually did a lot of research into cannabis gum. And the re thing is, cannabis gum does not work. And I'll tell you why, because THC is oil soluble, fat soluble. And if you put a fat soluble drug into gum, it does not come out. I spent several years back and forth to Colorado working with scientists there because, you know, they, they, they wanted me to help develop something since it, since it had become legal, but it doesn't work doesn't work. It stays in the gum. You do all the tests in the lab and you'll see that it does not, it does not come out. But yeah, I mean, that was the obvious, you know, when, when everything became legal, there was people wanted to make all sorts of different kinds of products. And so, you know, they contacted me as far as, you know, looking at possibly making this, but I don't think you're going to see a lot of cannabis gum because it's fat soluble does not come out. Yeah, I remember that part of the movie. I remember that part of the movie, Jackson. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm going to get out of here. Go for a hike. Um, Jackson, thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate it. Murat, thank you, sir. Uh, good good uh, trade on your oil. Hope, hope that keeps going up. Bill Richardson, really nice, kind words. Appreciate you. And uh, really glad to hear that, that your winnings have, have, have taken off like that. Really great. Mount Doji, good seeing you, my friend. Hope everything is well in Texas. And let's take a look here. Uh, John Cortez, appreciate you coming by. Michael Neal says message retracted. But anyway, thank you for coming by. Uh, Johnny, congratulations on your nice UNH trade. And Frank, um, I am too patiently waiting for TLT. As a matter of fact, I am definitely waiting for TLT. And, you know, we talked about having a 30 RSI, 100 day moving average confluence. If we get down here, it'll be interesting. We won't be quite to 30, but uh, be interesting to see what happens there. And Bing He, thank you coming for, for checking in from Singapore. Steve Burns, great to see you, my friend. And thanks for everything you do for everybody. Really appreciate it. If you guys haven't subscribed to Steve Burns at S, Joseph Burns on Twitter, best Twitter channel out there. So definitely subscribe to it. Um, 
Marco, good seeing you, my friend, from Slovenia, right? And uh, if I can ever do anything for you, Marco, uh, please let me know. If you have any questions, you know, you're not comfortable sharing in the chat, you can always send me an email. I'd like to help you any way I could, okay? Uh, Jesse, good seeing you, sir. Thanks for your service. And Kurt, thank you for your service and everything that you guys do. And um, uh, tough on that Mert today, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it was with the small position size, so it's definitely recoverable, and sometimes that happens. But, uh, you know, you, got, you have any questions, Jesse, anything I can help you with, Kurt, uh, you know, you guys just let me know, all right? And uh, did I get everybody? I think I did. If I didn't, I apologize. Jackson says, cheers, Greg, have a good hike and let's tee up on the time and date on Skype. Yep. Okay. I will definitely look at that. And um, yeah, I'm ready to go. I mean, we could even, we could even do it tomorrow if you wanted to. So uh, I'll take a look at that and we can, we can correspond uh, privately. So, all right. Good night, Anthony. Good seeing you, my friend. Hope everything's well, bud. All right. Have a good day. Go out and do something nice for somebody today and uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. U.S. government required disclaimer. Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind, which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.